Mr. Chancellor, I present to you Dr. Nubara Fayan. What if? It is a simple yet powerful question. Throughout his career, Dr. Nubara Fayan has courageously found possibility in what was deemed impossible and has used his strong science training and keen entrepreneurship acumen to make a significant impact on global health. Nubara Fayan a obtenu son diplôme d'ingénieur à McGill en 1983. Ensuite, il a réalisé des études doctorales au MIT dans un programme à l'époque unique axé sur une discipline émergente et prometteuse, le génie biochimique. We often hear about serial entrepreneurs who move from one idea to another. But Dr. Afayan is something very different, a parallel entrepreneur who continues to share his vision, passion, and experience with the companies that he's co-founded, even as he embarks on another projects. Starting at the age of 24, Dr. Afayan's desire to become a new breed of engineer has driven him to found or co-found more than 80 cutting edge companies. He grew his first company, Perceptive Biosystems, into a global leader in instrumentation for drug discovery. In 2000, he founded the biotechnology innovation firm Flagship Pioneer, a company that explores new areas of science, fosters an environment in which breakthrough innovations can emerge, and builds first in-category bio-platform companies around those innovation to transform human health and sustainability. Forbes magazine wrote, wrote that Nubarafayan pushes researchers to ask what if their craziest ideas were true. A decade ago, he asked a what if question that would literally prove life-saving for millions of people. What if messenger RNA could be used to produce vaccine and other medicines inside a patient's own body. During the pandemic, the answer turned out uh, to be in one of the companies that he has founded and is a household name, Moderna Therapeutics. Uh, its development of a COVID-19 vaccine with 94.5% efficacy has played a crucial role in helping society get back on its feet, and that includes, of course, all of us who are being to be here together safely. Dr. Afayan traces his what if philosophy to his transformative experience as an immigrant and a refugee. He was born in Beirut to Armenian parents, and in 1975, civil war forced them to become immigrants again this time relocating the family to Montreal. Indeed, Dr. Afayans has said that an immigrant's survival mindset is similar to what drives successful innovators and entrepreneurs, making him describe innovation as intellectual immigration. If you're going to innovate, he has said, you're leaving the bounds of what preceded you. If you insist and persist and adapt, eventually you might break through. You then become the native of the new way. Dr. Raphaël a reçu de nombreux prix, notamment celui du pionnier technologique du Forum économique mondial et le prix Golden Door pour ses contributions exceptionnelles à la société américaine en tant que citoyen étranger. En 2021, il a été décoré de l'Ordre national du mérite du Liban pour sa réalisation et son travail dans le développement du vaccin contre la COVID-19. In his tireless quest to improve the human condition, Nubar Afayan has proven himself an intellectual immigrant of the highest order, a visionary always striving to create the next new way forward. Mr. Chancellor, I present to you Nubar Afayan, so that you may confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa.
I'd like to call upon Dr. Afayen to make his address. Yeah. Stay here. Thank you, and congratulations, Chancellor McCall McBain, and thank you, Principal and Vice Chancellor Fortier, for that great introduction, and Mr. Panda, Chair of the Board of Governors. It's wonderful to be part of today's momentous celebration, and I want to especially welcome my family members who are here, my wife Anna, my brother Levon, his wife Anna, who joined us for this uh, special occasion. It's a true delight to receive my second degree from McGill University. I received my first degree, a Bachelor of Science in Engineering, nearly 40 years ago, in 1983. As an immigrant accepted into Canada and a first-generation university student, McGill offered me an extraordinary foundation, and I am forever grateful. Many of you have participated in events over the past year celebrating McGill at the threshold of its third century. Milestones like these offer opportunities to reflect, to celebrate, and to look ahead. I'd like to talk to you today about looking ahead, looking ahead with renewed commitment to imagination. As I mentioned, I came here as an immigrant, a political refugee whose family fled Lebanon during its civil war. As my friend and colleague, Raphael Raif, the president of MIT, and a fellow immigrant whose family also fled violence, recently mentioned, when you, leave, when you have to leave somewhere in a hurry, your education is something you can always bring with you. I agree with him, but I'd add this. You can also bring along your special imagination. I believe imagination alongside knowledge, reason, and faith in new possibilities are the core ingredients to innovating our way to a healthier populace and a healthier planet, and there's no time to waste. And my company, Flagship Pioneering, conjuring an imagined future is key to our scientific explorations. As you heard, we always start by asking, what if? We work together to imagine a future scientific outcome that unlocks new capabilities for fighting disease or protecting the environment, unconstrained by what seems possible today. For example, in 2010, we asked, what if patients could harness the information molecule, mRNA, to make drugs inside their own bodies? That what if question and the effort to answer it led to LS18, our 18th life science company a company now known as Moderna. After painstaking years of steadily making engineering and scientific advances, we ultimately found a way to do just that. When COVID came along, mRNA medicines were ready. Moderna brought the world a new class of medicine, not just a single drug, but an entirely new platform of medicines that I believe will play a role not only preventing and treating COVID, but also other infectious diseases and diseases ranging from HIV to cancer. In the case of Moderna, or any of the other dozens of our pioneering companies, imagination proved as key as command of facts, as key as scientific excellence. When you're trying to accomplish something that has never been done before, or establish an entirely new field, then reason and facts can only get you so far. Over my 35-year career, I've come to believe that we cannot expect extraordinary breakthroughs from reasonable people doing reasonable things. And yet, we spend most of our time, whether it's in the investment business, government grant making, or large company innovation, looking for the most reasonable ideas and insisting that they be highly likely to succeed and still expect breakthroughs. I'm not, to be clear, making an argument against reason, let alone at my alma mater university. I am making an argument against reason alone. I want to encourage you to ask, when we rely only on reason, what is being suppressed? What might happen if alongside the rigor of reason, we also let our imagination and creativity lead? When imagination leads, I believe we open the door for big breakthroughs. It's by removing the constraints of expectations, resources, timelines, and reason that we can press toward the answers that our world needs most. What if is the question that can guide McGill as it enters a new century? What if should accompany our graduates as they seek ways to put their new, hard-earned degrees to use? What if? Pursuing a what if is not always easy, but it allows you to start with the future you envision. That is to say, imagine, 
and work back from that future to how you might bring it about. I believe there are two ways to approach work and for that matter to approach life. You can either work in the present and move forward to the future that will result from that, or you can envision alternative futures, choose one of them as your destination, and then work in service of creating that future. I'm not saying one path is better than the other, but I believe that if you want to bring about true groundbreaking transformation, creating a strategy from the present forward will not likely get you there. This practice of not centering your thinking in the present, but in a desired future, is familiar to those of us who are immigrants. As the grandson of Armenian genocide survivors, I know the need to imagine a different future. An imagined future led my family over 50 years from Turkey, where we, le where we lived in ancestral Armenian lands for thousands of years, through Bulgaria and Syria, to eventually Lebanon, where I was born. In the 1970s, fleeing conflict in Beirut, my family imagined a new future right here in Montreal. Many immigrants become adept, adept at the discipline of focusing not on the present circumstances, as tough as they are, but on a desired future. And I think it lends itself to creation and innovation. A study released in the US just last week indicated that per capita, immigrants are about 80% more likely to found a company compared to US-born citizens. And yet, for the last few years, the US has been trying to exclude foreign-born citizens. My immigrant mindset has served me well. My journey out of Lebanon, my education here at McGill, my career and my philanthropic and development work, together with my wife, all of that comes down to the same fundamental choice. Do you apply yourself to the range of choices possible today, or do you instead work in an unexplored territory towards a desired future? I encourage you to consider focusing on a desired future even a seemingly impossible desired future for yourself and our world. Imagine what could be and work to make the impossible possible. Now, you don't need to do this imagining all alone. In fact, you shouldn't. It's quite perilous. Engaging in real transformation of work is not a singular journey. Just like broomball, a sport I learned on campus, just a few feet away from here, as an undergraduate at minus 30 degree temperatures. It is a team sport. Three of my chemical engineering classmates are here with us today, Neil, David, and Norma. Two of them were my teammates. And it's that teamwork that I learned here that has carried forward in making the leaps that come from that type of collaboration. To truly create enduring solutions requires other thinkers, other perspectives, and other disciplines. And this is a critical role for institutions today. How do we create places for people to come together and make room for imagination? alongside reason? What kinds of practices will encourage our best collective imagination? How can we transform imaginative ideas into practical solutions that can improve human life and the sustainability of our planet? How can we communicate across divides and differences in ways that strengthen us rather than diminish us? I think a lot about the degree to which impact and transformation are found at the tricky intersection of value and peril. The easiest things have already been discovered, unfortunately. The truly disruptive things left to be discovered are more often closer to the edge of what's possible. In an ecosystem, an edge is where one habitat borders another, where a forest meets a field or an ocean meets a shoreline. At these edges, new things happen. Biodiversity might increase, species might be negatively impacted, or populations might experience significant change. We need institutions that exist at these fruitful borders and support people as they lean towards the edge of what they know and what is possible. Living at the edge does not always feel safe, as anyone who has worked at a startup can tell you. What does it mean to support the cultivation of imagination, the ability of teams of people to keep working at the edge persistently? This is a question every leader who seeks to imagine a new future must take on and is an enterprise that lies at the heart of great universities like McGill. Let me leave you with a very important and current example. At Flagship Pioneer, we're actively imagining a future of preemptive health. Society is increasingly realizing that what we call healthcare is really sick care. What if we focused on stopping disease or delaying it before it takes hold? Disease preemption is desperately needed and increasingly possible. Emerging diagnostics and interventions can improve not only our lifespan, but more importantly, our health span. 
the period of time we can live in a healthy state free of disease. This may well be the only way to address the spiraling costs of our worldwide healthcare systems. What if we focus our society's powerful imagination on discovering stage zero cancer, not stage four cancer? At Flagship Pioneering, we're imagining a future in which we secure our health instead of resigning ourselves to receiving treatment only after we get sick. And we're committed to building the capacity in many different places, including here in Canada. Our commitment to help create a world where disease is preemptive was strongly amplified by our experience fighting the pandemic during the past two years. Through Moderna, we have seen what is possible technically and what impact it can have in just one disease. What if we did this in pandemics of infection, but also slower pandemics of chronic disease, such as cancer, Alzheimer's, obesity, and so on? Working on such global challenges has caused us to think and act globally, even as we form small startup companies. I'm happy to note that nearly a decade into its journey, Moderna recently announced a 10-year partnership with Canada to build a state-of-the-art mRNA vaccine manufacturing facility and support R&D to help grow the life sciences infrastructure in Canada. This adds to similar projects we are undertaking in Australia, in the UK, and in Kenya. To further spread our scientific reach, I'm also proud that McGill has joined Moderna's mRNA access program, which will accelerate new vaccines and medicines for infectious diseases through a collaborative research and preclinical development program. McGill is the first university in Canada to join this effort, and we're very grateful. I'm humbled to play a part in creating this collaboration within a country that accepted my family as political refugees and to contribute in a small way to the future of innovation in Canada. I've always had a robust imagination and an active one, but a 13-year-old boy who arrived here in Montreal in 1975, speaking imperfect French, having never seen snow, never ridden a city bus, never set foot in a biology or chemistry lab, even he could not have imagined that he would later return to this city and its signature university to claim an honorary degree. The only, the only lesson I can take from that is that we all must dream bigger, reach higher, and realize that so much more is possible than reason alone would assume. So go dream, go imagine, and together, let's change the world. Thank you very much.